I um, did a little stocking. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. So for those of you who don't know me, I am currently a second year student at the University of Toronto and I am currently studying computer science. Today I've got some exciting news to share. So I recently signed a software engineering internship offer at a big tech company and this company is one that I have known about and respected ever since pretty much when I first found out what a computer was. So I am truly just so thankful and grateful and excited about this opportunity. I definitely received a lot of help and support from wonderful people in my life throughout the entire internship hunting process. So now I am kind of just making this video to give back and I know that sounds cliche but I really hope that I can help out anyone that I can. In this video I will tell you every single one of the steps that I took that led to me receiving my offer as well as just some tips about the entire internship hunt process in general. And I know that this video will probably be very long so I will have timestamps up here on the screen right now as well as down below in the description so you can skip to any portion of this video whenever you want to. Now, now, by no means am I an expert with the internship hunt, but if you are currently looking for an internship related to software engineering, then I hope that hearing about my experiences holistically will be helpful and insightful for you. Okay, so this video is definitely very densely packed with information, but don't worry, you do not have to go get a notepad because I actually wrote an article on Medium that basically mirrors the content of this video. I will have it linked down below so you can go check it out and reference it whenever you want to. And with all of that being said, let's just get right on into the video because I have a lot to talk about today. Okay, so before we start really quickly, let me just tell you a bit more about myself and my background in computer science. So like I said in the very beginning, I'm currently in my second year of studying computer science. Um, I would say I was first introduced to computer science in my AP computer science class in high school. However, I really did not learn that much during that class and um, honestly, I don't retain anything that I learned either. So I would consider like the, I guess, start of my computer science journey to be first year of university. And in my first year, I took a total of three computer science classes. And through those classes, I became very familiar with Python programming. And I also learned about space and time complexity. So like big O things. I did learn a lot in my first year of university, but by the end, I definitely still did not have much experience at all. So really going into the entire internship hunt. I really only had one year of formal computer science education and zero years of formal internship experience. So definitely it, it wasn't looking great for me. However, I knew that I wanted an internship by the end of my second year and that's why I worked really hard in order to prepare myself for it. By no means am I a genius nor did I start coding when I was like 10 years old. So it's definitely still possible to receive an internship offer from a big tech company even even if you don't have that much experience because I definitely did not have much experience. And now I will tell you exactly what I did to receive my offer. Okay, so starting in April of 2020, um, the very first thing that I did was just gather information. I really had no idea what the entire software engineering internship recruitment process even looked like, and that's why I had to go look it up online. I turned to Google, my best friend, and I searched what is the recruiting process like for software engineering internships, as well as what does a software engineering interview look like. And these three things were my main findings. So number one is that the recruiting process for most US and Canadian based companies typically start in like August and then end in like November to December ish. Now, of course, there are some companies that start earlier, like in July. And then there are also companies that end way later in like March or even April of the next year. And then my second finding is that a software engineering interview typically consists of both a behavioral and a technical component. And for the behavioral component, it's usually just um, the interviewer asking you to talk about yourself, your resume, your experiences, how you react to certain situations. So it's really just like a conversation. And then for technical interviews, those typically consists of you solving a question like those found on the code. 
And then my third finding was that there are such things known as referrals. And uh, this was actually very important for me and I will get to why later on in this video. Okay, so after gathering all of the information that I needed, I was now a lot familiar with what the whole software engineering recruitment process looked like and I felt ready to start preparing. And the very first prep that I did was technical prep. So starting in mid-April, I started to study data structures and algorithms. And the very, very first thing that I did was review my class notes because I had learned about data structures and big O in class. So I just looked over my class notes. However, I didn't quite feel like my class notes were enough and I really wanted a strong foundation in data structures and algorithms. So I actually looked for an online course to supplement my class notes. And the online course that I took is this one. I will have it on the screen right now. Um, I did find it on Coursera. I do think it is a fantastic course. However, I will say that this course goes in very, very deep. Um, honestly, like I really don't think you need to know that much, but nevertheless, it is definitely a good course and it did help with my understanding of data structures and algorithms. Now, I didn't finish the course. I only watched like a few video lectures from it, but it was still very, very helpful. Okay. Okay, so after I felt that I had established a good foundation in data structures and algorithms, it was time to practice. And what I did for practice was do LeetCode and also read Cracking the Coding interview. I started with the learning modules on LeetCode. I think those are great because they allow you to practice a certain concept or data structure. So especially in the beginning when you're still trying to like find your way through things and really solidify your um, knowledge with data structures and algorithms, then I think like being able to practice a certain concept is very very good and then after working my way through some of the learning modules I moved on to just doing the problems so I started off by doing easy problems because um, in the beginning I could not solve the medium level questions at all but as I practiced more became more comfortable I started to do some medium questions and I did attempt a few hard ones but um, I really did not have much success with those and a quick note and this is from both my own experience and also just from what I've heard from other people but typically for software engineering interviews the level of difficulty of the question that you'll most likely be given is a lead code medium so as long as you can comfortably solve the code medium questions then you should be good for most software engineering interviews of course there are exceptions but usually like at most companies you'll only be given medium level questions. Okay, and then for cracking the coding interview, um, reading this book was definitely very helpful. It gave me a holistic insight into what the entire interview process looked like. For example, it talks about what you should do before your interview to prepare. It has a behavioral interview guide as well as summaries of the most important data structures and algorithms. And it also has a guide of how you should approach solving technical questions too. So definitely the book is very helpful and I do highly recommend it. Okay, so those four things were pretty much all I did for technical prep and now I just have some tips. And my number one tip is do not cram technical prep. You want to have a good understanding. You can't really like go through the process memorizing things. You really have to understand it and the best way to actually understand it is spaced repetition and being consistent with your studying. So I would say make a game plan for yourself. Tell yourself like, okay, this week I'm going to study this, next week I'm going to study this and stick to it. Be consistent. Do like one hour of practice every single day and that will be amazing. One hour is not a lot of time but it will be effective. And then also just for me personally and and I don't know if any of you out there will relate to this, but I personally did struggle a lot with technical prep just mentally um, whenever I could not solve a question, whenever I just did not understand a concept, I would just like feel so down, feel so bad, feel so like stupid. Later on, I adopted a much better mentality for myself and that is that I told myself that I wasn't doing all of this technical prep just for interviews, but it was also for my own learnings. I knew that doing all this technical prep was definitely making my foundations in computer science stronger so then I shouldn't like 
hate doing it because it was helping with my own learning and I found that having this mindset was a lot better for me and definitely helped me through the process. So if you find technical prep tough, um, I feel you, but do not give up. Um, try to have a good mindset about it and really push through. Okay, and that's everything that I want to say about technical prep. Now let's talk about gaining experience. <laughs> so for me, I actually did not have any previous internship experience at all before this. My resume was pretty much blank. I did try to look for internships in my first year. I think I applied to maybe five in total and I never heard back from any of them. So then I decided to create experiences for myself by working on personal side projects. So throughout the summer in total, I did three personal side projects and I also added another one on my resume, which was my school project. I definitely think that personal side projects are very valuable experiences. So the very first project that I did was my Chrome extension and I made this using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I actually published my Chrome extension on the web store and I have it linked down below in my description. So if you are curious about my very first project, then um, feel free to go check it out. And as for my second project, it was building my own portfolio website. I did it using Django, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you want to know more about how I built my website, I actually did make a video on that. I'll have it linked either up there or up there. Um, yeah, you can also go check it out if you want to. And then for my third project, it was a bit more complicated than my last two. It was basically like a small travel blog web app and I made that project using the MERN stack, which stands for MongoDB, ExpressJS, ReactJS, and Node.js. And now you may be wondering like how I learned JavaScript and HTML and Django in order to do my personal side projects because I really only learned Python in my university classes. And the answer is I turned to online courses. There are so many amazing online courses. I personally recommend going on Coursera to find an online course. They have so many free online courses that you can audit. And if you are looking to learn a new technology in order to make a personal side project, then I definitely recommend um, maybe looking for an online course. And again, this video is not sponsored, but um, definitely recommend taking some online courses. And also one more thing that I want say about projects is that for me I focused all my projects on like web development and this was because I just didn't want to I guess like overwhelm myself with trying to learn too many things. There are so many frameworks and technologies in web development and I felt like it was enough to keep me busy in the summer so that's why I just stuck to web development. I didn't want to like have to try to learn web development and then try to like learn iOS development and scripting and like that, that's like too much so I really just stuck to one region and um, you can too if you want to like make your experiences more focused. Okay and the very last thing that I did for preparation was crafting my resume and um, I had no idea how to write a resume so then I turned to my best friend Google. <laughs> I'm sorry I, I will stop saying that. I went on Google I just searched how to write a resume. I did come across some very good resources and I will link my favorite ones down below. So if you're currently working on your resume, then I definitely recommend checking those out because those were very helpful for me. And then in order to give myself an idea of what an actual resume looked like, I um, did a little stalking. <laughs> So I just went on LinkedIn and I just kind of like stalked a few profiles because some people do have their resume linked on their LinkedIn profiles and I just kind of looked at like what it looked like and then after getting a good idea of how to write my resume, I actually went onto Canva to make my own. Um, I did not follow any templates, I really just went in and did it myself. And also I really like Canva. Um, I started using Canva for my YouTube thumbnails, but I found that I really, really like it. So um, if you haven't heard about Canva, then I do recommend checking it out because it is a very cool application. Okay, and that is it for my preparations. Now it is about August. Companies are starting to release their applications, so it is time to apply. And the number one advice that I have about applications, and if you only take one thing from this video, take this, and it is to apply early. And the reason is because for a lot of companies, their applications are rolling. So that means that as soon as they begin to receive applications, they will start to go through them and start contacting people for interviews. So that means that if you apply 
apply late, then um, it is likely that many of the internship spots are actually already filled and of course you don't want that, so definitely apply early to give yourself the best chances. Okay, so the very first thing that I did was actually reach out to people for referrals. So remember how I said in the beginning that finding out about referrals was important for me? Well, now that I knew that they were a thing, I started contacting people who I knew personally to ask for a referral. And you may be wondering how exactly is a referral helpful? So how referrals work is that at many companies, this is not all, but um, I would say a good amount of companies do follow this. A referral can help you get your foot in the door by getting your resume in front of the eyes of an actual human recruiter. So as we all probably know right now, software engineering internships are very competitive and sometimes a company may receive like hundreds of thousands of applications for just one position. So unfortunately, that means that probably many of the resumes are not even seen by an actual human recruiter. So then referrals can be really helpful helpful in making sure that your resume does get seen by an actual human. And now full disclosure, so at the company that I received my offer from, I actually did receive a referral to that position and um, I definitely think the referral helped in getting me that first phone interview invite. So I would say if you can get a referral, then definitely get it. Um, reach out to people who you know. If you want to like cold message someone on LinkedIn, then go for it. I personally didn't do it just because I was like social anxiety but um, you know if you want to then definitely go for it but do not worry too much about getting referrals um, I have heard about people who just cold applied online and got the position so it's definitely still possible to just cold apply and get the internship offer okay and then last thing is um, make a tracker for yourself I made a tracker for myself in Notion it can be difficult to keep track of all of your applications especially if you are applying to a lot of companies so I highly recommend making a good tracker so that you can keep track of all of your applications. Okay, so that is all. Um, oh, my back kind of hurts. Um, anyways, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, then thank you so much. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. I really worked very hard on preparing this video. I wanted to present my experience to you in the best way that I can. And if you want to see more videos from me, I make a lot of like tech, computer science, university related videos, then be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss out on a future upload. And yeah, if you are currently looking for an internship, then good luck. I hope that everything goes well for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!